It's the last televised game of the season. The Cleveland Cavaliers play the Atlanta Hawks Friday night at 8 o'clock live on TV8. The winner of the six-player award will be announced at the Cleveland Atlanta game tomorrow night at 8. The second greatest entertainer in the whole wide world, Dick Sean, joins me for the next Merv Griffin Show, along with the rockin' Chuck Berry, singer-songwriter Buffy St. Marie, Elaine Boozler, and disco star Denny Terrio. Tomorrow afternoon at 4.30, right here on Television 8. We return now to our TV8 night movie feature, The Mark of Zorro, with Tyrone Power and Linda Darnell. On the next noontime, follow the bouncing ball with Mitch Miller. Right, and we are going to bounce into the family room as we continue our theme week of fashioning a home. The American Cancer Society will be represented, and uh, we'll be talking about their Reach to Recovery program, and we'll be selling daffodils. And we'll see Indian Big Chief Gabe Paul all on the next noontime. Tomorrow at noon, here on TV8. Next on Cinema 78, the Great Northfield Minnesota Raid with Cliff Robertson. Now, Bob, your brother. For my brother Frank, you'd understand. Sometimes one got to be left behind so the rest can move right along. Let the dead bury the dead. Why, Jesse's just saying what the Lord said, Cole. Bob ain't dead, Jesse ain't the Lord, and we ain't going yet. The Great Northfield, Minnesota Raid, Saturday night at 11.30 on TV8. And now back for the conclusion of our TV8 night movie feature, The Mark of Zorro. Now here are some scenes from tomorrow's night movie, Not of This Earth, starring Paul Birch and Beverly Garland. Please. Dr. Rochelle, does this man have some kind of a power over you? Has he threatened your life or something? Nadine, I, I, I really must hang up. I, I have a great deal of work to do. Look, Dr. Rochelle, I... The doctor is no longer in contact with the story. Mr. Johnson. Remain in your room. on the TV8 night movie. Tomorrow night, Houlihan and Big Chuck invite you to enjoy Not of This Earth at the same time. If you're looking for fun and excitement, Bowling for Dollars is the place to be. Host Dick Goddard keeps those balls rolling weeknights at 7 on TV8. Watch your friends and neighbors strike it rich with cash jackpots and color TVs. Oh, finally! That's Bowling for Dollars, weeknights at 7 with Dick Goddard. When you're looking for a new home, find out about the great selection available all over Cuyahoga County. About 2,000 homes are sold each month. And if your family income is $15,000 a year, you can own a nice one. Let the Housing Information Service show you where they are, personally for free. Call 621-1818 and choose where you'd like to live. WJKW TV 8 Cleveland. 
The cold strike is over, spring has arrived, but the street lighting in Cleveland remains the same, a disgrace. In fact, some areas look as if the state is still enforcing Governor Rhodes' blackout of highway lights as an energy saver. We think it's time the city of Cleveland, the Illuminating Company, and the state of Ohio got their act together on repairs and replacement of faulty street lights. This is by no means a new problem, but the excuses are the same. Winter weather, old wiring, not enough money. And finally, we are told again that just be patient, folks, and we'll get around to this problem as soon as we can. Well, the people are tired of excuses and tired of being patient. Faulty lighting in the neighborhoods is an invitation to crime. Faulty lighting on the highways makes driving more dangerous. Faulty lighting also is a symbol of a city and a state that can't keep up with simple housekeeping chores. This sorry condition has existed for years. Improvement is long overdue. The taxpayers have every right to expect action now. Check the transmission, Corporal. Check, Sarge. Check the brakes, Corporal. Double check, Sarge. Did you check the tires? Private. If you checked your tires, they'd last a lot longer. Underinflated tires can wear out up to 40% faster, and not rotating tires can subtract even more miles. So please, check your tires. Next time, we're going to check the tires. Yes, sir. Even the spare, sir. Have you got any idea what it's like to have a stroke? To be flat on your back? Helpless as a baby? Well, for almost a year of my life, I was. Only I got lucky. They put me back on my feet and taught me to use them again. Yeah. Yeah, this may be where I'm coming from. But thanks to you, I'm not going back. WJKW TV 8 Cleveland. This is Final Edition, a report of the day's happenings compiled by News Center 8. Two trains have collided head-on in California's Los Angeles County, derailing four Amtrak passenger cars. Sheriff's deputies say at least 15 people have been injured, few details known at this time. White House sources indicate President Carter has put off any decision on whether to develop the neutron bomb. Carter reportedly wants to keep his position flexible until he sees what the Soviets do at arms talks. One of the first atomic bomb developers, Dr. Edward Teller, has come out in favor of the controversial bomb. Teller says it's a good defensive weapon, that intense fallout would be short-lived and not widespread. Congressman Charles Diggs will be arraigned in Washington today on charges that he arranged kickbacks from his staff payroll. Former Congressman Otto Passman is also scheduled for arraignment. Charges against him are connected with the Korean bribery scandal. One of Passman's lawyers wants a postponement because of his health. Panamanian leader Omar Torrijos has surprised the administration with an objection to treaty amendments giving the United States defense rights to the waterway. This means Panama could reject the first treaty already approved by the Senate. President Carter has recommended a fighter for women's rights as the first woman general in the Marines. Colonel Margaret Brewer worked to open all non-combat military jobs to women. Pentagon sources say Defense Secretary Harold Brown is requesting a substantial rise in spending for civil defense over the next five years. Without a dissenting vote, the Oklahoma State Senate has adopted a bill that would allow school boards to fire teachers who engage in public homosexual conduct. For the first time since 1972, an election is underway in the Philippines. The opposition is already crying foul over some election procedures. Cleveland's proposed school levy Defeated by a landslide vote, 625 of 649 precincts reporting the unofficial return showed 65,675 votes against the passage of the levy and only 38,900 supporting the additional tax. The Cleveland Teachers Union now plans to ask the state Supreme Court to force the closing of the schools. An explosion at the Perry Nuclear Plant construction site near Painesville apparently was caused by a spark from a welding torch. A Cleveland Electric Illuminating Company spokesman explained the reason for the blast, said no fire followed it, six workmen were injured in the explosion, no one hurt seriously. Three men in ski masks threw pies in the faces of Oberlin College trustees during a meeting last night. The men entered the trustees' meeting, tossed the pies without warning. Then they ran out of the meeting room and vanished. College security personnel unmasked one of the men, 
but he ran away before being identified. The 45 members of the Ohio Association of Public School Employees in the Richmond Heights schools have been ordered by a judge to end their strike and report to work. It's not known if the bus drivers, secretaries, custodians, and cafeteria workers will obey the order that was issued yesterday. The walkout centers over stalled talks on a wage reopener clause. A strike by members of the United Auto Workers Local 2015 at the Modern Tool and Die Company in Cleveland ended. The two-day walkout over unresolved grievances affected 1,000 workers in the firm's plant on West 130th Street and its machine shop on West 150th. Company President Dick McFadden says employees should report for work at their regular times. Testimony continues today in the Danny Green murder trial. Federal officials yesterday disclosed that of 40 handwriting samples taken from suspects in the Green bomb slaying, one belonged to Anthony Liberatore and the other to Brian O'Donnell. Liberatore is the missing Cleveland Regional Sewer District board member indicted in the killing, and O'Donnell was a top Green aide. Ronald Frazier of New Philadelphia won the top prize of $50,000 in last night's Ohio lottery drawing. He also won $25,000 on last week's program. Police say a teenage boy, who along with a friend, jumped aboard a slow-moving coal train at a railroad crossing in Euclid in an effort to save time, ended up having his feet crushed under the wheels of the train, forcing doctors to amputate. 13-year-old Michael McCallion of Euclid is reported in critical condition at Richmond Heights General Hospital, where the surgery is being performed. His 14-year-old companion, Michael Craig of Euclid, escaped injury. Jim Jones flipped in 11 of 14 shots and tossing a game-high 27 points at the Coliseum last night to spark the Cavaliers to a 117-105 win over the Milwaukee Bucks. Campy Russell added 20 points. The victory kept the Cavs in the driver's seat for the home court advantage in the upcoming playoffs. The Cincinnati Reds started the baseball season successfully with an 11-9 triumph over the Houston Astros at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati yesterday. And the Indians arrived in Cleveland from their spring training base in Tucson to get set for Saturday's opener at the stadium. And the forecast looks rather promising. It will be partially clearing by morning, the overnight low about 40 degrees, milder and uh, partially cloudy on Thursday. Friday with a high around 60 degrees. Cool Friday night with a low dipping into the upper 30s. But the baseball opener forecast, mostly sunny and mild on Saturday with a high near 60 degrees. Probability of precipitation, 20% the remainder of tonight uh, and near zero Friday and Friday night. Winds westerly 10 to 20, then shifting northwest 10 to 15. Currently at Cleveland Hopkins International Airport with cloudy skies, the relative humidity is 100%, wind from the northwest at 13, but gusting to 24. And the barometer stands at 29.96. The temperature, 48 degrees Fahrenheit, that's 9 degrees on the Celsius scale. Final edition was compiled by News Center 8. Pretend I'm a door to your apartment or your bedroom, and there's a fire on the other side. Feel me. Come on, don't be shy. Give me your hand. Feel me. Am I hot? If I am, don't open me. Get out a different way. Because if it's hot enough outside to make me feel hot, it'll knock you out before you took two steps. So in a fire, feel your door before opening it. If it's hot, don't. I've been practicing medicine for 29 years and I still don't know how to do it well. Why don't you just say it, flat out? All right. You have a cancer. That's a scene from a picture. But I've been told that in real life, too. And there's one chance in four they'll tell you that someday. Help us improve those odds. As a member of the National and Ohio Association of Broadcasters, WJKW-TV8 subscribes to the NAB code and is privileged to display this seal of good practice. TV8 invites you now to join us in this inspirational message. Walk.
walk the furthest city light. I chose to be a plain New England farmer. It's restful to arrive at a decision and restful to think about New Hampshire. Robert Frost, poet of the people and winner of four Pulitzer Prizes. Good fences make good neighbors. When I see birches bend to left and right across the lines of straighter, darker trees, I like to think some boy's been swinging them. But swinging doesn't bend them down to stay as ice storms do. Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep. To go before I sleep. WJKW TV 8 in Cleveland, owned and operated by the Storer Broadcasting Company, telecasting at maximum power 302 kilowatts, concludes another day of service to your community through entertainment, education, and information. A pleasant good night and good morning.